Welcome back to another Excel Academy YouTube video. Today, we're going to be hosting an essay writing crash course for IB Life Sciences Bio Paper 2. First and foremost, I'd like to apologize to subscribers and viewers who have been waiting for more content to be posted on the channel. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am a medical student and having gone from you know, finishing your matric um, in a year with so much uncertainty that was 2021 and transitioning to university, it was quite daunting for me. Um, you know, being in a new city, having to do med, it's quite a lot. So my sincere apology for those who have been waiting for more content. I'm back home and more content is on its way. So let's get cracking. So in front of you, what you see is the IB Life Sciences Paper 2 rubric, right? And this rubric is, of course, for the essay, right? And this is just for your reference, right? But it's important that you understand what's expected of you um, as part of the essay, because unfortunately, this rubric isn't provided to you in the final exam, right? So please make yourself aware of what's expected of you and familiarize yourself with this rubric. But we are going to be unpacking what's expected of you. So let's get started. Okay, so as we've spoken about to your right is the official IB Life Sciences Paper 2 essay rubric, okay? But to your left, is what markers usually use, right? So the markers um, at a school level as well, um, they usually use the symbols to the right of the rubric on the left, okay? So for example, PL stands for planning, D stands for decision, K stands for knowledge from source, etc., etc., right? And yeah, the most important thing to note is that the essay is 40 marks of paper two, right? Okay, so the most important thing for paper two is time management, right? Paper two is basically testing two things, right? Your Firstly, it's your ability to synthesize and understand information. And then the second thing is also time management. So it's so, so, so important that you write your essay within that two hours provided to you and you also answer the case studies right so let's unpack how or what the best way um, to utilize your time should be okay so in most i in fact i think all ieb exams you are given your 10 minute reading time right now honestly um for me I started with the case study first, right? And then I did my essay after I had done the case studies. But I know that some people prefer to start with the essay first and then do the case study. And some teachers advise their students to do the essay first. Some, some teachers advise their students to do case studies first. So it honestly is up to you with what you want to start with first or what works best for you. But in my opinion, um, I found it better for me to start with case studies first and then move on to the essay. Because think about it, you've already sort of bagged 60 marks. Whereas if you do the essay first, you know, you've only really bagged 40 marks. And it's very easy to get carried away with time in paper two. Um, both case study and essay. It's very easy to get carried away with your essay. It's also very easy to get carried away with your case study. So it's very important, uh, which we'll get to later, for you to be concise and to the point. Okay, so on that note, let's get started on how we are going to utilize our time best um, to write the essay. So in front of you, you'll see that you have 60 minutes to write your essay, right? you should take one hour to do your case study. If you take any longer than that, 
um, I feel like you're going to be in trouble for your essay because writing the essay, you need a lot of time to think about what your decision is. You need to think about how you're going to sort of, um, you know, organize your ideas into themes. You need to think about your own information. So there's a lot of things to think about in the essay. So I would say if you encroach on 65 minutes, if you go over the 60 minute um, time period for the case study, then you are going to be in trouble for your essay. Okay, so let's break down those 60 minutes. You should take 10 minutes to read and highlight the information in your source material. You should take 10 minutes to plan. Okay, and then you should take 40 minutes to write. Right, now the marks awarded in your plan are as follows. You have one mark awarded for the decision, one mark awarded for themes and synthesis. So if you've been able to synthesize the information into themes, okay, you get awarded one mark for having an argument and also for having a counter argument okay and then you also have one mark awarded for basically um, expanding on your arguments and your counter arguments from information using information from the sources right so when you're expanding on that argument or that counter argument all you need to do is just use simple sentences or even just phrases you know just to indicate to the marker that you've been able to establish what those arguments are and you've been able to unpack that in a very concise manner in your plan, okay? And then another mark is awarded for sources, okay? So you must state which source you've taken that information from, whether it be source A, source B, source C. You need to state where that information um, is from in your plan okay and then the final mark is awarded for own information so you can see here that six out of the 40 marks which is basically 15 percent of your essay mark is your plan so if you don't plan you are in trouble and to your left here we basically have d f i s c o and for those of you who are creative, you can perhaps make a mnemonic to help you remember what's expected of you in your plan. But I'm sure for those of you who have been writing essays since grade 10, um, the things that are expected of you in a plan should come as being second nature. Okay, so we've already discussed what is expected of you in your plan. Okay, so some further tips, right? So your key themes should be developed, right? Um, it shouldn't be summarized because this is a plan, right? And a lot of people, what they do is they actually write the essay first and then they write the plan after they've written the essay just so that they can make sure, you know, that they get the six marks. But the reason why the plan is basically 15% of your essay mark and six out of 40 is because it's a vital way or it's it's crucial for you to, to, to plan in order for you to write the essay. So by it being allocated six marks of the total 40, it's basically encouraging you to plan and put your thoughts out on a piece of paper and then synthesize it and then um, write the essay. So it's very important for you to plan before you write the actual essay because otherwise uh, your essay would lack cohesion, it would lack synthesis, it would lack flair. So please take my advice and please plan before you write your essay. Okay. Um, as it states here, the key theme should be developed. It should not be summarized because obviously it is a plan, okay? Um, your source references should be identified and you must, must, must show either you agree or disagree with the topic 
or um, if it's a yes or no answer to the topic, or if it's either choice one or choice two. You need to um, state it clearly on your plan where your um, decision lies, right? Whether you agree or disagree with the topic, whether you've chosen choice one or choice two, or whether it's a yes or no, all right? Um, you also need to decide what facts you are using for argument and counter argument in your plan, okay? And you also need to be able to write your plan neatly, okay? So the IB awarding six marks for the plan out of the total 40, not only is it getting you to put your thoughts down on paper or forcing you rather to put your thoughts down on a piece of paper before you write the essay, it's also encouraging you to um, write legibly and for you to plan, right? It's in the name. It's a plan. Okay. So there's many different ways that people use um, to plan. But most people either use a concept map or a spider diagram. And some people also use a table method, right? So you either do a concept map or you use a table method and you clearly need to show your arguments for and against as well as um, your own information. You also need to show the sources, reference, and you also need to show your decision, right? And you also need to keep an eye on the clock. As I said at the beginning, your plan should take 10 minutes. Now the introduction. What is an essay without an introduction? Nothing. So an introduction is so, so important. And even though you aren't awarded any marks for the introduction, it's so important for you to have an attention-grabbing and interesting introduction so that your reader is hooked and that your, your reader is interested in the topic, right? So it's very important that your introduction is attention grabbing whilst also being scientific, which you'll get to a bit later, right? So your introduction must have your decision, right? And you must state your decision clearly, right? So the markers either use D plus or D minus to help them um, whilst marking. So if you are for the topic or if you agree with the topic, it's D plus. If you're against the topic, it's D minus, right? And in your introduction, you must make a clear decision in, in the introduction. As I've stated, it's either you agree or disagree, yes or no, or choice one or choice two. So this is a very big tip, right? So most English teachers actually tell students to write, you know, the, the introductions with a lot of flair and, you know, show your own personality and whatnot. And some English teachers also just tell students just to reword the topic. And that's the best way to do it, the latter, which is to rewrite the topic or the question in your own words because in that way you cover all your bases by ensuring that you've covered the relevant basically you've shown to the marker that you understand the topic by basically rewording what's already given to you because in that case you'll have everything in the topic that what, what that what was given to you in your essay introduction. So you should introduce the topic gradually and thus rewrite the topic or the question in the question paper or the exam paper in your own words. You should also explain the importance of the topic or keywords or definitions in the introduction, right? So it's very important that you don't do all or you don't explain every single introduction or every single definition or keyword or topic in your introduction. You should show or explain important definitions and you should show the importance of the topic 
in your introduction, right? So that's a very important um, thing to note is not to, the mark is not looking for how much you've been able to memorize your population ecology definitions and how much um, you can regurgitate on the paper. The marker wants to see whether you've been able to synthesize what you know with what's been given to you in the source material and how you've been able to marry the two together, okay? So the introduction's basically function is to give background information and some interesting facts and ideas to excite, very important there, excite the reader. Okay, so a guideline for how long your introduction should be is five to six sentences. Okay, I'm not going to go with the lines because um, people's handwriting varies in size, but it should be five to six sentences. Okay, it's very important for you uh, to, as I said, state where you stand, whether you agree or disagree with the topic. So you must make a clear decision and thus you should not be vague, okay? You need to show the marker where you stand and what your decision is. And another key point of information is that you should not, absolutely do not change your opinion or your viewpoint within the essay, right? You must have the same viewpoint throughout your essay and throughout your plan. And that's going to show, um, that's going to minimize you going off track and rambling on or waffling on, right? So you must not change your opinion and you must stick to one viewpoint in your essay and also your plan. Okay, so you must have paragraphs in your body, okay? Um, the essay must have more facts for the argument or for the stance that you have chosen to argue for than the counter-argument, right? And that's to ensure that it's not necessarily a balanced argument, but it's to ensure that you have, um, how can I say, it's not a balanced essay, it's a balanced argument, right? So you have more for your argument and less against your argument, all right? So in that sense, you must have 10 or more facts in detail for your argument, right? And paragraphs are extremely important, okay? Um, it shouldn't be one blob of of sentences right or one blob okay your pa your your body should have paragraphs and those paragraphs should each have their own theme okay but we'll look at an alternative essay format just now all right so the opening sentence of each paragraph should explain what the paragraph is about okay you should use the peer method in each of your paragraphs. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with the Peel method, it's point, standing for P, evidence, standing for E, explain, standing for E as well, or it could be um, analysis, standing for A, okay? So it's it could be P-E-E-L or P-E-A-L, right? And L standing for link, all right? The next point is that you should not jump around with different ideas. As I said, each paragraph should have its own theme. And so, for example, if you're talking about the environment in paragraph one, you shouldn't bring ethics into um, paragraph one. If you are talking about ethics in paragraph two, then your link right? Your link should be the bridge, right? You should be able to establish that I've finished talking about the environment. I'm now going to be moving on to my next paragraph. And that's up to you 
with the language and the way in which you are going to link the two paragraphs together. But we'll look at some of the language that you can use um, in doing so. Okay, so with regards to abbreviations, right? A lot of people waste time by writing FSH, for example, each and every single time. The, the full follicle-stimulating hormone, follicle-stimulating hormone, follicle-stimulating hormone. And writing an essay is no joke. I mean, you have to write a lot of information within a very short period of time. I can guarantee you at the end of paper two, your hand will want to fall off, okay? So it's very important for you to help yourself out and also help the marker out, right? For ha having to read follicle-stimulating hormone every single sentence, that's quite a tedious, that makes for quite a tedious read, okay? So with regards to abbreviations, all you do is, the first instance where you want to mention the word, all you do is you write the full word out, follicle-stimulating hormone, and then following that in brackets, you put FSH, okay? And every other time you're going to be referring to FSH, you just simply write FSH, okay? So, you state it once, um, the full, you state it once in full, and you state the abbreviation in brackets after that, okay? And then each and every other time you mention follicle-stimulating hormone, all you have to do is just write the abbreviation, FSH. All right, and it's so, so, so important for you to know that in this essay, right, I know a lot of people, um, for example, if you feel like you are running out of steam for one of the paragraphs and you have a brilliant argument or you've just come up with the most amazing own argument or own information for another paragraph, um, a lot of people, what they do is they leave about, let's say, 10 lines and they start the other paragraph, okay? And then they come back to the paragraph which they didn't finish. And then they have to fit in the rest of the information. And then they realize, hey, I don't have enough space. So they then draw arrows and lines and topics. And it's honestly just a mess. So that's why um, arrows or asterisks, asterisks are not allowed in bio paper two essays. Um, also, diagrams aren't allowed. This isn't a geography essay. And bullet points are also not allowed. This also isn't a geography essay. So yes, it's very important for you to take note that no diagrams are allowed, no bullet points are allowed, no asterisks are allowed, and no arrows are allowed. Because these affect the flow of the essay and thus it affects the readability and also the scientific merit and the presentation of the essay, okay? So those could affect your presentation and your scientific merit marks. And we can see that in the rubric, those are basically four and two, giving you six marks together. So yeah, do not use arrows, do not use diagrams, bullet points, or asterisks. Okay, and another way that you can lay out your paragraphs is the following. So you could have two to three paragraphs for your argument, okay, where you have three to four facts per paragraph, followed by one to two paragraphs containing your counter argument, in which you would have two facts per paragraph, okay, or two counter facts per paragraph, right? And then finally, you'd have one paragraph where you have your own argument, okay? And you'd have four own arguments there. Right, so use of knowledge from the sources is worth eight marks. Okay, we have said, we've established that it's worth eight marks, so you have to have four You have to have four, and it's and each of those are awarded two marks, each giving you a total of eight. Okay, um, you should have a minimum of ten facts for 
your argument, right? A minimum. This is a minimum, right? So you should have a minimum of 10 facts for your argument. And you must also validate the source right? One of, the, one of the sources, right? And this is a minimum of one. You could do one or you could do two, right? So you must validate the source or you must comment on the quality of the source or the relevance of the source in some way, shape or form, okay? Um, you must develop or synthesize the argument, not just copy the information in the source. And by doing so, you must put this information from the so the information that you that you obtain from the sources into your own words. If sources are copied directly in quotation marks or directly from the text, marks will unfortunately not be awarded, because as I said before, um, paper two tests two things: you being able to synthesize knowledge, and you also being able to manage your time efficiently. So this touches on um, synthesizing information, all right? And paper one is test, paper two, I beg your pardon, is testing that, right? They want, the markers want to see, and the IEB wants to test you to see whether you can synthesize information from a written text, from source material, into your own words in a scientific way. Okay, so use of knowledge or your own knowledge rather, beyond the sources, is worth four marks. So you should have three to four facts beyond the sources that need to be given, okay? So the as, as it states here, it should be beyond the sources, right? This information is your own information for a reason. It should not appear in any one of the sources, right? And these facts must be relevant and integrated into the argument. Um, that's why I highly suggest using the first method where you integrate your own information and you also integrate counterpoints into themes as opposed to having one paragraph or one or several paragraphs dedicated solely to um, information for the argument or several paragraphs against the argument, and then another paragraph with containing solely your own information, right? It's it it shows the marker that you've been you can write in a very nuanced way and that you are able to you know handle the information in a very um complex you're able to handle information uh, very well, okay by using method one. If you use method two, um, it's not really an issue. It's just that, you know, your marker won't be as impressed and you could perhaps run into some issues. But it's up to you and what works best for you, all right? So the facts must be, as I said, the facts must be relevant and integrated into the argument. You must state the fact and link it to the argument. Because we, as we'll see later, um, the marks actually vary for your own argument, right? Your own information must be synthesized, as I said before, in you could use the peel method. Okay, and this is so, so, so important, right? Your own information must, and I repeat, it must support your decision, okay? Um, if your own information is going to count, is, it, is, is actually countering your decision or your viewpoint, it's actually... <laughs> Yo, I'm actually not too sure, but you are going to be penalized um, because it's not really own information if it's actually countering or, yeah, if it's bringing down your argument. Your own information should actually be in support of your decision. Okay, so content relevance is awarded two marks. Um, here, we comment on the quality of the source extracts, I beg your pardon, 
yeah, we, we comment on the quality of the source, okay? We comment on the relevance of the sources, okay? And these must be referred to at least once or twice, okay? And in terms of content relevance, there shouldn't be any repetition, there shouldn't be any digression, and the argument must be relevant. So you shouldn't be talking about... Um, why the sky is green, when in fact we're talking about why the sky is blue. Okay, so the quality of argument, right? Supporting the viewpoint or your opinion or decision, that's awarded eight marks, okay? Here we can see that it's strongly, for you to get the full eight marks, um, you strongly support a clear position or your information supports a clear position, the reasoning is very clear and succinct. Flow is logical, compelling with regular linkage. And that's why we use the peel method because, of course, um, it's part of the rubric that you link information. Okay. And it's a well integrated argument. Right. So, here again, we're talking about um, the quality of the argument being strongly in support of the argument. Your position must be clarified, right? So in that sense, you must, must, must make your decision very clear and you must stick to one decision, one viewpoint throughout your entire essay and the entire plan of your essay, all right? Your reasoning in your essay should be very clear and to the point, i.e. it should be very succinct, all right? You must show synthesis. So you must show that you've been able to take information from the source material. You've been able to add your, sort of put it into your own words and also integrate it into a theme, right? That shows synthesis, okay? Um, your flow should be logical, okay? So your thought shouldn't be all over the place, right? If you're sticking to one theme, as I said before, if you're talking about the environment in, in, um, paragraph one, you shouldn't be bringing ethics into paragraph one, right? You should stick to one theme per paragraph, all right? So that's why your flow is, it's important that your flow is logical. Your essay should also be compelling, all right? And here again, we see that linking and, th and the synthesis of information is so, so, so critical. And here again, we can see that the peer method is the best way for you or to help you synthesize information, all right? Now, for you having to synthesize or peel these 10 facts, okay, you're basically being awarded 16 out of 40 marks, which is 40% of the essay, right? So 40% of the essay is basically you being able to take a minimum of 10 facts, right, a minimum of 10 facts from the source material, put it into your own words, make sure that those 10 facts are logical, okay, make sure that those 10 facts um, tie in to your themes that you've identified, and to make sure that you just apply peel to all of them, right? So, yeah, it's basically 40%, 16 marks awarded just for that. And, of course, for you to have a well-integrated argument. Okay, so having a counter-argument is important, right? Is your essay fair? And that's the word. It's not necessarily a balanced essay, but is your essay fair, all right? Does it evaluate both sides of the debate? Or does it acknowledge that there's both, um, there are two sides to this debate and that you've been able to synthesize your own information, uh, uh, information in support of your decision rather, and that you've also been able to look at decision or a bigger part in information that counters your decision. Okay, so... You must integrate at least three or four counter arguments into your essay, okay? And you must comment on 
this alternative viewpoint in your essay by integrating these three or four counterpoints of view, right? Now, here we can see that one out of four marks are awarded for two facts, two counterfacts, right? If you have four counterfacts, okay, you will be awarded two out of four marks, right? If you have only one counterfact, which you have successfully peeled, you'll be awarded three out of four marks, okay? And finally, if you have two facts, counterfacts, right, that you have successfully peeled and integrated into um, your essay, you'll be awarded the full four out of four marks. So, with this information, choose your battles and fight them wisely. Okay, so finally, we're going to be looking at the conclusion. As with the introduction, you aren't specifically awarded marks for the conclusion or in the conclusion. Rather, your introduction and your conclusion lead or um, basically they, they give, they complete the essay, right? Um, an essay is nothing without an introduction and a conclusion. So it's very important that you have an introduction and a conclusion irrespective of whether it is awarded marks directly or not, right? Um, the marks for the introduction and the conclusion and the presence of an introduction and conclusion is awarded as part of your presentation mark, which we'll get to shortly. Okay, so if you don't have a conclusion, right, it's a minimum loss of three marks, right? So immediately you've lost three marks if you don't have a conclusion, right? So a lot of bio teachers say if you've run out of time or if you know that you may run out of time. So let's say, for example, you have one and a half minutes on the clock for your essay or let's say you've left your essay for last and you have one and a half minutes to go before pen's down, right? Stop where you are or finish the sentence as quickly as possible, okay, and get on to writing that conclusion. Because if you don't have that conclusion, it's a minimum loss of three marks. You could lose actually many more marks, right? It's all dependent on the marker. Okay, so in your conclusion, it's very important that you don't give any new information or arguments mentioned before. OK, um, you should restate your viewpoint or your decision. And it's important for you to write this in the third person. OK, the conclusion should be a short summary of what was written about in your body paragraphs. Um, it should be a short summary and you should restate your viewpoint and you should also re-emphasize the importance of your choice, okay? And in this conclusion, there shouldn't be any emotion, there shouldn't be any rhetorical questions, okay? It should be powerful so that it can leave a long-lasting effect on the reader. The reader should actually go away thinking about how important um, this topic that you've written about is and they you should actually compel them you know to to go away and think about this and actually do research on um, this topic that you've written about that's how good your conclusion should be okay so a big or a great tip in my opinion is for you to use the connective Ultimately, right? So ultimately is used to emphasize your stance, right? So for example, you could be talking about, you should, you, you, you'll be summarizing uh, what you've spoken about in your paragraphs, your body paragraphs, and then you go full stop, ultimately, comma, blah, 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 and state uh, your stance once again. And you can also highlight the importance of the topic using the connective ultimately as well. 
Okay, so as I said before, um, your introduction and your conclusion basically give a fullness to your essay, right? Uh, because an essay is nothing without an introduction and a conclusion. And so here is where the mark is actually awarded. It's awarded as part of the presentation mark, which is four marks, okay? So here to get the... Basically, a full four marks is where the tone is mature and suited to scientific language, excellent and appropriate language and terminology, correct paragraphing with good transitions, interesting introduction, and a satisfying conclusion. So, yeah, your tone should be mature. Your tone should also be scientific and not emotional. Remember, this is a persuasive essay but it's also a fair essay, right? You are mentioning the counter arguments, right? But you are trying to basically persuade the reader to believe in your viewpoint, right? And it's important for you to understand that it's a scientific essay, actually. It's not an emotional essay. Um, your language should be appropriate and your terminology should be accurate, right? Um if you're talking about white blood cells and if you confuse them for red blood cells, um, that's an example of inaccurate terminology, okay? Your language should be appropriate as well. Um, your grammar must be excellent. Your spelling should actually be on point, right? Because it's a scientific essay, your spelling and your grammar should be on point, right? Your paragraph should have good transitions, and we'll get to how we can use peel language to get you that 40 out of 40 essay. Um, as I said, you need to have an interesting introduction, and you need to have a conclusion that will leave your reader so mesmerized by this essay, and so mesmerized by this topic, that you've actually cultivated um, a passion for the topic in your readership, right? Or oh, among your readership, okay? Um, yeah, as I said, your conclusion should be a short summary of what has been written in your body paragraphs. And this is one thing I can definitely say is very, very important, is that your handwriting should be legible and neat, okay? Um, as I said before, um, you know, if your asterisks and arrows are complete no-nos in a bio-essay, and in that case, you know, your, your handwriting should be legible and neat because you're trying to lay out very important ideas and if it's written untidily or if it's structured untidily, um, if your marker cannot read or if your reader cannot read the essay, then how do you expect them to give you marks for it, right? So it's also important for you to write neatly because then you will be able to understand what you've written. Because if you don't understand what you've written, um, let's say your plan is a complete and utter chaos, um, if you've written your plan extremely untidily, if you don't know what you've said, um, if you don't, if you can't make out what you've said, most likely you're going to write a very bad essay. So this presentation mark is also um, encouraging you to write and present your ideas in a neat way. Okay, so two marks are awarded for scientific merit, and these are basically these two marks are basically awarded for academic rigor and, ac and accurate reasoning, right? And you should also have a cohesive argument being carried throughout the essay, all right? And ultimately, the scientific merit mark is awarded for is awarded to if you've been able to answer the question, right? So usually a question is asked of you in the um, in the exam paper, and then you'll use that to make your decision, okay? So ultimately, you need to answer that question 
um, to get the scientific merit mark. If you've just written around the topic, you aren't going to get these marks. You also won't be getting the marks for um, quality of argument, etc., etc. So in general, your essay should lack emotion, but you should argue with personality and flair. You should write your essay in the third person. No I's, no me's, no I believe that, no um, therefore I believe. There shouldn't be any mention of I. Your essay should be written in the third person to keep it scientific, okay? Don't waffle, keep it scientifically correct. And also keep it factual. You use source material and your own facts um, where necessary. Don't be repetitive, stick to the point, avoid slang, use correct biological language, check your spelling, don't ask questions, make statements, and finally, link ideas up and let it flow. So in review, um, firstly, you should have an introduction. There's no title to this essay. Um, it's not a summary. You must state your decision and viewpoint in your introduction okay your body should have paragraphs it should have a good flow and each paragraph should have a theme and finally your conclusion is a summary of what has been written about in your body paragraphs it reaffirms or restates your decision or your viewpoint on the topic and it should not have any new information Okay, so this is the Peel Method for those of you who aren't too familiar with the Peel Method. Firstly, you should state your main idea and argument, and that falls under P for point, right? You should provide evidence supporting your point as for your evidence, right? The second E standing for explanation you should explain how your evidence supports your point. And then finally, you should link to the next idea or paragraph or back to your central point after you've um, stated your point, provided your evidence and explain how your evidence supports your point. Okay, here's a, another um, explanation on the Peel method. Okay, and here's some useful language that you can use uh, using the Peel method and also in your essay. So, for example, if you're making a point or if you're starting, if you're starting a paragraph, you could say it has been suggested that, or it is believed that, or some people argue that, or um, let's say um, many of the sources are in favor of or one argument is that, or one school of thought is that. Um, and then when you're talking about the evidence, or when you're introducing evidence uh, as part of your argument, okay, you could say the evidence clearly shows, this is supported by, this is demonstrated by, the source tells us that, okay. Um, when you're talking about explanation or when we're explaining the evidence that we've just mentioned okay we can say the source clearly indicates this shows us that it is clear from this that the evidence explains that this supports the argument by it appears that this demonstrates that okay and finally when we are linking okay uh, we can say with this in mind it is evident that Therefore, it is evident that all this evidence demonstrates the following. Okay, so those are some useful phrases that you can use in your bio essay. Okay, here's an example of how um, someone has used the Peel method. So as you can see in red, we've stated our point. Okay, so first of all, removing wild animals from their natural habitats are incredibly cruel. Okay, we can see there's an error there. Okay, um, in blue, we have supported our point with evidence. Okay, so when kept captive, these beautiful creatures become bored and lonely, often leading to a condition called zucosis. 
Animals suffering from psychosis begin performing anxious, repetitive acts such as rocking back and forth, swaying, grooving themselves excessively, and vomiting. Here in green, we can see that we've explained the evidence, right? So conditions such as this clearly demonstrate that wild animals belong in the wilderness, not in restrictive prison-like enclosures. And then finally, in purple here, we can see that we've linked back to the central point or to the topic. Animals must be freed from zoos now so that this terrible suffering and mental torture ends for good. You could have also added a therefore comma, animals must be freed from zoos now. Um, but this is also fine. Okay, so this is another example of how, or this is another explanation rather, of the Peel method. And below the explanation are some phrases that we can use, for example, uh, to begin with, moving on to, as well as, for point, um, and there's several more under each um, letter, okay? And so now you try and be creative and you should use these in your essay. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more content, and please share this video if you found it helpful.